the empathy building doesn't happen as deeply. And you might run the risk of being deep inside the second listening session, thinking about the other one and getting them confused and asking a person about something that they weren't talking about. Because we're so deep in there, we're paying rapt attention. We're using all of our little, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I use the, the uh, analogy of carrot tops, like a field of carrots. There's like all these little carrots that we can pull on and see what's underneath them. We don't literally pull on people, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's an analogy. Um, it's, it's something I call a pull tab. It's like an indicator that there's more there and you might end up with a carrot from the earlier listening session that day. And you don't want to do that to somebody because that disrupts their trust in you. So a lot of people are like, oh, my boss is not going to let me do just one a day. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, then <laughs> you need to think about <laughs> how, to t how to understand that boss and why there's that deadline and talk to them about how this is building something different. We're not getting insights from an interview. We're not treating people who are giving us their thoughts like they are, you know, sort of a subject. You're the researcher and they're the subject. We're not working in a colonial mindset like that. What we're doing is we're sort of like paying respect to them. We're, we're sort of referencing and recognizing their humanity and we're not using what they say directly. The insights don't come from the listening session. The insights come later when we do our qualitative data synthesis. And we do that using focus of mental attention and what happens if you framed all of these listening sessions the same way is that patterns will form. And when you're doing qualitative data, and here's where the judgment comes in. You can have like a spectrum of how good the data is, how reliable is it? 